So, um, yeah, basically, um, as the first GDPR guy of this session, I have the awkward uh, role of digging you into the uh, violent fight about uh, why an algorithm, why and whether automated decision uh, explanation, a right to explanation exists in, in GDPR. In eight minutes, I cannot do that. So uh, we will talk about uh, a method uh, that uh, my co-author and I have been developing in the last year. Uh, we, we did this project during this last year. So Margot Kaminsky from Colorado uh, Law and, uh, and, and me. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, uh, so we started with this project uh, that became this paper. Uh, so basically the uh, background, so the starting point is uh, the view that the GDPR is a binary tool. From one point of view, it guarantees individual rights, and in particular, right to contestation, right to receive meaningful information, and so on. And on the other hand, we have uh, the GDPR is a co-governance tool. Hmm? For example, data protection impact assessment, that is the tool that we are going to discuss this uh, in, in few minutes, is uh, a clear um, a tool based on accountability. So data controllers uh, um, are free to determine their compliance uh, methods and the regulator should check uh, in an appropriate way. So, just to give you some numbers that are not computer science numbers, <laughs> we have different levels of information and explanation in the GDPR. We have general information about the logics uh, and uh, con consequence of an algorithm, automated decisions. Then we have contestations and right to human intervention related to uh, automated decision making, and then in the recital we have also this uh, strange right to explanation. But then, to add more complexity to you, member states have implemented this with several different safeguards. So we have at least nine or ten member states that have even different safeguards and different uh, perspectives. So to quote a teenager song, your mess is mine. And uh, <laughs> problems of explanation. So first of all, there is no legal consensus on what and whether a right to explanation exists. Second, it's not always technically feasible to reach what lawyers would like to reach. Uh, so uh, in terms of what explanation means, etc. A third point, transparency fallacy. So even though we could reach explanation, this would be probably not fully understandable or not useless. Uh, data subjects could be not interested or could not re really understand because maybe what lawyers want, what lawmakers of the GDPR wanted was not just a pure explanation but was a functional justification of the algorithm. We wanted, I mean, the GDPR wanted that the automated decision making could be somehow justified under point of view of uh, fairness uh, in the bigger perspective. I have another presentation about fairness this afternoon. So basically, um, the first step, we try to understand different layers of explanation. Hmm? We have at least two layers, uh, two poles, a general information, uh, Article 15, so meaningful information about logic involved, and individual explanation, so why in uh, a certain decision was taken. Yesterday, in the first tutorial, there was uh, this definition of global explanation and case-by-case -case explanation. I think these are the two poles. But since the GDPR, based on Article 24, require a risk-based approach, uh, meaning that the higher is the risk for the data subjects, the higher should be the safeguards, we imagine that uh, the first poll should be guaranteed to everyone, the last one just in the most risky situation, and the intermediate level should be like um, a, a scalable uh, intermediate explanation based on group, affinity, and so on. This is something that will be developed in the future with the help of some computer scientists. So now let's look at data protection impact assessment. Basically, we try to compare the um, um, requirements of this data protection impact assessment that just to explain you to, to people who are not familiar with this is a um, 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 accountability duty in the GDPR according to which uh, the data controller needs to analyze, uh, to assess and mitigate risks to fundamental rights and freedoms of data subjects uh, in the data processing that uh, they are um, 
carrying out. So basically, uh, we uh, in the, uh, just to mention one example, uh, this DPIA, I mean, on left you see all the duties of data protection impact assessment, so all the steps. And just to mention one, for example, um, the um, assessment of necessity and proportionality of the processing may correspond huh, to right to uh, inform, so to the duty to inform data subjects, for example, about the categories of data used in the profiling or why the profiling is relevant. Because in the right part of this uh, slide, I put uh, the uh, Article 29 working party exp yeah, explanation of what the uh, <laughs> right explanation should be, but just trying to visualize it better. So the joint explanation of algorithmic data protection impact assessment and uh, right to explanation, so duty to explanation. So basically, there is a need to describe the processing in data protection impact assessment, right? But this, descri this description of the processing can be very easily used as an explanation of the system, which is a duty under Article 15, for example. We know that the data protection impact assessment is not based on public summaries, so it's not public, but it's uh, well recommended by Article 29 Working Party that part of data protection impact assessment could be made public. Also, you see, the, between explaining the, uh, the algorithm and assessing risks, there is a two-direction arrow, because basically also assessing risks should be explained. So the data subject should also receive, in our view, an explanation of risks and how these risks are mitigated. And for example, about individual rights. So um, according to Article 22, data subjects should receive, uh, sh should have a right to contest the algorithm and uh, to have human in the loop, etc. Well, this could be also seen as a way to collect the view of the data subject that is required under the DPIA uh, duty. So you see how these two tools can somehow work together. And there are some benefits. Of course, this is a, a continuous circle because then after this feedback, you redesign the processing and you do again the data protection impact assessment. So just to, and this is the final slide with this 36 uh, seconds left, the benefits of this approach. So first of all, there is an optimization of compliance efforts. Data controllers would explain and do and assess the risk at the same time. This is also a way to overcome the transparency fallacy because making public parts of the DPIA would be also a way to justify and not just explain the algorithm, justify why the risks for fundamental rights and freedoms for individuals will are mitigated somehow in, the, um, in that uh, specific data processing. And, um, um, and basically also this tool can be seen as a suitable safeguard under different points of view. Um, so this is basically more, some more biblio and thank you very much.